Well, hi there. This is the Zen Habitat's four foot by two foot by 18 inches. And you may recall that in the past, we reviewed the Zen Habitat's four foot by two foot by two foot enclosure. And really, I like, I loved that enclosure. I just had one complaint with it. And that was the wood panels wouldn't be very good with humidity. And actually, before they even sent the enclosure, I said, have you considered making it out of PVC instead? And they said, yes, we have, and it'll be coming soon. And here it is. And ever since it's been here, I've been trying to figure out what am I going to put in this behemoth? At first, I was thinking about putting the Aki in here. In fact, I would love to use this enclosure for the Aki, but I have one concern, and that is the hole here in the back for wires. In the two foot tall enclosure, that's plenty high that I'm not worried about the Aki getting out through there. But in this 18 inch model, I'm concerned that the Aki would find its way out. And so I've decided this is not the enclosure for the Aki. This is going to be an enclosure for a blue tongue skink. So let's get to work. I'm going to keep this pretty short as far as my actual review of this enclosure because I reviewed the taller wooden version and this is exactly the same. It even looks the same, which I wasn't expecting. It still has that bamboo panel look to it, which I think is really neat. I was not expecting it at all. Of course, the big fundamental difference is it's a little bit shorter, though I think they do make a tall version of it as well. And these bamboo panels are actually made out of PVC, which means they're water and heat resistant very much. It's awesome. It's awesome. I'm really excited about it. It's a great enclosure. Just like before, it came with the optional substrate shield, which I'm definitely going to use. If you're using this for a snake or something like that, you might not need deep substrate in there. You probably could get away without using this. But in this case, we're going to put that in there. It comes with some really cool adhesive tape to hold that substrate shield in place does cut down the amount of space for your doors, but it adds a lot of space for substrate. And, and this is optional, you don't have to use it. If you have a snake or something in here that's not going to be using deep substrate, if you're you know, not using loose substrate, if you're using a reptile carpet, paper towels, newspaper, something like that, you wouldn't need the substrate shield. I'm actually gonna be building a bioactive, but actually not super tropical, a little bit semi-arid, sort of a landscape in here because this is a northern blue tongue skink and they need things a little bit drier than say the polydarium we have built behind me. So they include this groovy tape which I haven't ever used and this is what you use to adhere your substrate shield in place. So let's give it a go. Ooh, it is really sticky. Looks like it's pretty cool stuff. It's super sticky on one side, but then it's got a plastic coating. So I should be able to put it in place, stick it into the enclosure, and then take off the backing. All right, feels pretty good. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing a lot of experimenting with this. So for starters, I said I'm going to make it bioactive. I'm going to put a little drainage layer in here. I'm going to use lava rock. For one thing, I've got a lot of surface area here. There shouldn't be a lot of water standing below, so I'm not going to use hydro balls, and I think they're going to look pretty neat in here. So this is red lava rock from my local hardware store. Looks like the whole bag. Just try to get a nice even layer. Hot diggity. Next up, we're gonna to need to put a little screen in here and we got a big roll because this is a big enclosure. This is a four foot roll and this is a four foot enclosure. So I should just need to cut two feet of this. Put screen in there like always. And like always, it's best to cut this a little bit too big instead of a little bit too small. This is just gonna keep your substrate from mixing with your drainage layer, which in this case, are these lava rocks. There we go. This will be a lot easier to do without those doors. The way these Zen habitats go together, 
once the screen lid is on, the screen lid is on. So I have to do everything through the front. And again, if it's a little bit big, that's okay. You just don't want it a little bit small. Okay. Now I'm gonna experiment with a new sort of substrate. And, and this one was actually recommended to me by Reptifiles in their article on Blue Tongue Skink substrates. It's gonna use topsoil and play sand. And the topsoil that I chose is one that I actually used for years during my master's for burying beetles. It's organic and it doesn't have anything harmful for burying beetles or blue tongue skinks in it. It's one available here locally, but you might need to shop around at your local hardware store. And then just regular play sand. So I'm gonna go mix those up in a roughly 60-40, topsoil 60%, 40% sand. We'll see how that goes. So now I've got my mixture, approximately 40% play sand, 60% topsoil. I think it's not all mixed up just yet, but it will get mixed up as I pour it in here. So I, we'll see how this goes. I might end up just trying to dump it in a second, but there you get a look for it. I want to put in a little bit of it carefully so I make sure I get all my screen down in place before I just start dumping willy-nilly. And while I'm doing this, I'll let you know about some of the other experiments I'm doing. So one of the experiments that I'm really excited to try is I've got a couple of species of grasses. One of them is a full sun grass and the other is a partial sun grass. I'm really not sure how well they're gonna work. I'm gonna put the full sun on the basking side of the enclosure and the partial sun on the other side of the enclosure. And I will let you know as time goes on if those are working out for me. But I'll just go ahead and fill this up the rest of the way now. <sighs> Looks like I'm gonna need another bucket full. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. I will probably add more substrate to this later but I'm concerned about not being able to move it out of this location on our table. For now, this will be enough, but I will probably add maybe this much substrate again. So I've got a few things that I can use in this enclosure, like I've got this big piece of cork bark from his previous enclosure that he likes quite a bit. I've got this huge piece of ironwood, which I'm definitely sticking in there. I've got my two species of grasses. Let's see, I've got Burgundy bunny, which is the full sun grass. And this is one I actually found online. This is Elijah blue fescue. This is the partial sun. This one I'm the most optimistic about. I found the full sun grass before I was able to actually track some of this down. I'm gonna try both and we'll see how it goes. And then of course, I've got a water bowl. This is a must. So I'll, I'll begin. Let's see, with the biggest things, because the biggest things are the hardest things to move around. And I'm thinking about the way that I have this situated. I'm gonna want the warm side to be over there. And so, let's take a look at my piece of iron wood. It's so cool, it's heavy, man. Let's see here, hopefully I can still wedge it in there. Oh yeah, with the doors off, that was a piece of cake. Okay, uh, the next thing, let's see, I'll, Move them around, that's gonna be my hot side down there. So I'll maybe have this grass over here. I still want it fairly close to the lamp because grasses need a lot of sun. But maybe not quite as much as this guy who I'm gonna have really close to the lamp. And actually I don't want it directly, directly under it because it could get scorched. So let's see here. I'll play around with that. I want my water bowl not directly under the basking lamp, but close enough to the front that I can change it easily. So I'll put that there for now. This rock I'm gonna put in the sun because I actually like it when he wears down his claws a little bit, climbing up on that to use it as a basking platform. And this will serve as a pretty excellent hide 
maybe positioned up on top of the spider wood like that. So for now, I'm gonna try to get these grasses planted. I might not have them all the way in because as I already mentioned, I'm probably gonna add quite a bit of substrate once I get this into its final position. I think when I add more depth of soil in here, that might work pretty well. We shall see. Okay, now the big one. That was the easy one. Oh, much better. <clears throat> now what I have are our lamps, and I've gone with the Fluker's Sun Dome. I really like this lamp. I've been using it on my other Zen Habitat's enclosure, and it's great. And what I really like about it, it's a, it's a really deep dome lamp. You can see it's deep. It's really deep. And that gives me space for this 160 watt solar glow bulb, which this is a really great bulb because it gives both heat, UVA, and UVB. And I've actually been seeing some research lately that would suggest that the type of UV exposure that you get from these mercury vapor bulbs is actually better than what you get from the tube bulbs. So I'm gonna go with this. If you don't go with a deep dome, then sometimes the bulb will protrude out of the bottom. And something I've really liked about these Zen Habitat enclosures is that the top is all screen and it's all metal. So you've got nothing to melt. That's something I really, really hate about a lot of the more commonly available enclosures is that the top has a lot of plastic in it. And if this lamp ends up in just the wrong spot, it'll just melt a hole right through it the worst. All right, I think what I'll do now, now that I'm actually pretty happy with what I've done, I'm gonna end up moving this over a little bit. I think I wanna get it closer to that light because grasses need a lot of light. And on top of that, um, we're gonna move this enclosure to its final location. I'll put in the rest of the substrate and then we'll just see what our skink thinks of it. All right, well, it's just about time to introduce our blue tongue to his rad new enclosure. I'd like to Take a moment to thank our patrons at Patreon who helped actually provide a lot of the supplies for this enclosure. We are so grateful for all that you guys do for us to help us make rad videos like this and just to help us to grow as a channel. All right, let's toss him in there and see what, what he thinks. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Go play, buddy. Well, hi there. <laughs> thought. Oh yeah, my deep thought. Does it have to do with this? Just a second, I remember what that deep thought was. It was so deep. I've come so, back shallow. So deep. Like, oh! Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I had an epiphany just now as to why 
William Riker never really sought out a captain's position. He was always happy to stay as commander, the, the, his number one to Jean-Luc Picard. The seat back on the captain's chair oh is God. too high. <laughs> <laughs> How did he move it from the bucket into the container? I'm furious. I'm going to report him. <laughs> Jason likes this idea. <laughs> There's your problem. 